All right, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. Today, we are going to make a wireframe for a model. So, you know, you've all seen the technique. It's basically a wireframe of, of the model that, you know, looks pretty good. And essentially getting to this point, um, there's a few steps involved in order to get a quality looking wireframe. And a lot of times you'll do tutorials on the internet, and I've looked at many, um, you know, that try and explain the process of getting a really good wireframe. And, you know, to date, I haven't found that much. Um, I've, well, I've found a bunch of different ways. I mean, God, there's, there's a whole bunch of different ways to do this. But um, in this case, I, I kind of figured out a, a pretty good method that I will share with you because it's a great uh, thing to know. <laughs> okay, so essentially this is where we're at now, and that's after a lot of refinement. And the render times take a little bit longer, uh, the more quality you give it. So anyway, we're going to start from scratch at some point and learn how to sort of just up the quality on this so you get a good looking wireframe. All right, let me show you where I started. All right, here was the very sort of beginning of the process. And, you know, you can see where that looks. Uh, that looks really ugly. Okay, we got a lot of aliasing and stuff going on. And if I move it down the line, you know, this is, you know, in the middle somewhere, and then, you know, there's a, there's an image of doing some more adjustments, and then some more adjustments. This might not show up very good on YouTube, but, and there we go, and then our final. And you can see the final here has really nice, you know, ambient occlusion properties, and it just sort of has a nice, you know, a nice feel to it. So, anyway, it's all about up in the quality, and we're going to do that. And this tutorial, um, believe it or not, was inspired by a tutorial that I found on D. Nguyen Art's YouTube channel. Okay, he's got a lot of stuff on Maya, um, very knowledgeable, a good teacher. He's got a passion for letting you know what's up. So anyway, we give him a deep fried ectoplasm award uh, for excellence in uh, education. And there you go. So. Go check him out. Um, you can find a link to him. Uh, I subscribe, so you can go to who I subscribe to and just sort of hit the link from there. So anyway, go check him out. And while you're at it, don't forget about Lester Banks, because Lester has Maya tutorials as well. And he finds a lot of stuff on uh, Vimeo. So, you know, there's a ton of stuff on Vimeo. And, you know, if you want to do some Cinema 4D or Blender or whatever, Lester he's going like gangbusters night and day finding good stuff for your brain all right so go check him out all right well let's start uh fresh um here's where we were at on the render view and i think what i'll do is we'll just start a new a new project and if you go in and just create yourself a you know give yourself a helix and and make yourself a plane okay we're going to keep this really basic just so you can see what's going on here all right so let's start. Let's go into our, our uh, hypershade. So go to your window, rendering editor, hypershade. And your hypershade comes up. There we go. Got it. Now, what I want to do is first, I just want a surface material, uh, just a basic surface shader like that. It'll show up black, and that's cool. But what we also want to do is we want to assign it an ambient occlusion. And that's what kind of gives us that nice shadowy kind of feel. So I'm going to hit ambient occlusion here. And now you'll see you have two nodes to work with in your hypershade. If you just middle mouse button, drag and drop on top of this shader, and then just hit default, uh, it should look something like that for you. Okay. Now, you might want to come up to your graph input output connections and just click on this little icon. Or you could go to graph and go to input output connections. And here we have the surface shader node that shows up. And this is really important. When we're working with this network, we're always working with like these three nodes, sort of, as far as a, a surface shading group. So right now I've, I've chosen the ambient occlusion and you can see where that shows up over here. If I click my surface shader, well, there's my surface shader. And then I also get a tab. I can go back to my ambient occlusion. And if I click on this surface shader, you can see where it says Surface Shader 1 SG. Well, that's right here. And by default, it kind of stays on Surface Shader 1. So you may have to hit your tab. And in this tab, the Surface Shading group is where we find some pretty important stuff. Okay. 
Because we're working with contours, we do want to make sure that we enable contour rendering to start with, okay? And this will give us the color of our line. Um, these, the lines I was working with were blue. So let's just try and maybe say, let's work with the, the green that we normally get when we, you know, call up a, call up an object or activate, you know, an object. And I'm going to let, I think I'll just keep my width at default for now. And we'll go back and change stuff later. So that's cool. All right. Well, first thing we need to do, grab our object and make sure that we right click, come down and assign that existing material. Okay. So I'm going to put that surface shader on here. Now you'll notice it go black and it just does that. So get used to it. Okay. That's cool. Now let's do a quick render. I'm going to bring over the render view. And I think what I'll do is just sort of get rid of a lot of these images right here. I'll just sort of kind of go through and delete delete some of these saved images. All right, and that was my last render. Well, I'm going to go ahead and hit render right now. And I'm in, um, yeah, my render view is at 540. So I think what I might do is come into my render settings. Let's get those render settings up. And um, just because I can, my computer's pretty fast. So I think what I'll do is I'll up this width and height to like say 1280 by 720 and that'll just get me a little bit larger that'll give me a little bit larger render yeah there we go okay well I'm gonna keep it like that and I think what I'll do is just save this image okay I'm gonna click there and save that image and um, you'll notice where we assigned it that contour render but our line is not showing up all right and you know you have to wonder well where is that line well we need to do one thing first because we enabled contour rendering on the object itself and on the shader we have to do the same thing over here in our mental ray render settings so if you go to your features and open up that tab we'll go down and you'll notice that at the very bottom here of the feature section there's something that says contours well if you open up your contours there's the magic button we enable contour rendering within mental ray and we'll up the samples in a little bit and um, we might change up this filter type a little bit because this is starting out at a pretty low quality at default but we'll work with that in a little bit the next thing you have to be aware of is that we need to tell mental ray that we want to have lines that go oh, around the silhouettes and lines around all poly faces okay because those are what we want to see that's our wireframe right there so make sure those are done now when we go back and do a render okay by default you can see where yeah that's that's what we're getting that looks kind of looks like what we want I'm gonna go ahead and hit save on this one we'll just chart the progression um, I don't like the size of those lines they're pretty thick so remember you usually have to come into your hypershade and look for that surface shader group or just you know somehow get to your surface shader group and we're gonna take that um, line width down a little bit to start with like to maybe like 400 you know it starts out pretty thick by default so I'll move that out of the way and we'll do another render all right I'm gonna save this one as well and I'm gonna do another render uh, let's see here let's do um, let's maybe bring these down just a little bit more I'm gonna go ahead and hit my surface shader here and I'll just bring that down to like say 0.350 or something like that and I'm gonna leave it there all right now um, you can tell where it doesn't look too good in the render like in in the ambient occlusion itself uh, ambient occlusion samples start out pretty small at first and we have to raise up the samples it looks a little bit blocky and we got grain and you know some of that so let's work with that ambient occlusion real quick um, once again if you're in your hypershade just click on your ambient occlusion get to that and we'll up the samples right now it's at 16 and that's a pretty low default value um, you know in this case I might try 128 you know and right now the spread is at um, 8 800 all right so we'll leave it we'll just leave it right there oops 
Ooh, see, I clicked on too many samples. I want 128 samples. All right, there we go. Okay, so now let's do another render and see what happened. I'll come over here and do a render. And you can see where it takes a little bit while longer for this render to happen as you start up in the quality. But look, right away we got a way better look on this ambient uh, occlusion shader. So that's cool. I think I'll just leave it there for the moment and we'll take a look at something else. Uh, this is just sort of a flat plane back here and we can assign this same shader or we can create another one and assign it to this plane. So I think what I'll do just to make things look good is I'm going to activate this plane and assign that um, surface shader to there as well. And now this will pick up the shadow that is, you know, missing from the plane. Okay. So we'll do, uh, let's see, did I save that one? I better save it. We'll take another render. All right. So now you can see where, because we assigned that same surface shader to this, this plane, it's sort of um, basically picking up the ambient occlusion being produced by, you know, this object. So we have a default light in the scene right now, and it's just basically casting a downward light. So it was affecting this, but it wasn't affecting anything right here because we didn't have shadows or anything turned on. But, you know, with an ambient occlusion shader, basically your shadows built in. So anyway, that is cool. I'll go ahead and save that right now. And um, we'll go on to, to sort of looking at these lines, how to clear them up a little bit. So if you come over into your Hypershade once again, let's, let's select our, actually, nope, take away your Hypershade. Let's come into the quality section of our, and our features, okay, in the render settings and come down and that's where we're going to work with this over sample filter. And, you know, I'm just going to do an extreme for now, but you can play with this and, and work up to like say eight, but I'm going to just put it at eight right now. And I'm going to switch my filter type from box filter to say more like triangle filter. And, um, yeah, we'll go with that. So we'll up our samples and see what that does to that. I'm going to bring this, um, bring this over here again, and we'll go ahead and do a render. And we will wait for a while. <laughs> yeah, fortunately this goes pretty fast, but it's important that you see the changes as they happen here because, you know, uh, you, you get, you get, get the idea. So now that we upped that, got rid of some of the aliasing, those are looking a lot better. All right, so, so I'm liking that. Um, the next thing, they still look a little bit raggedy to me. And let's try and see if we can up our, our production on those. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll, I'll save that. And let's look again in the, um, in the render settings. Let's see if I can find my render settings here. Um, we can leave the oversampling to 8, just like we had. But this time, let's come over into our quality section and look at like a normal quality preset. I'm going to go ahead and just say up that to production value. And you're going to see a mistake that happens here. And this is where most people will say, ah, oh, give this up. I, you know, I can't get it. I don't, <laughs> I give up. So now that I switched that up to production quality, let's do another render. I'm going to take a render here real quick. All right. Well, right away, it's looking pretty good. I'm seeing a really nice ambient occlusion down here. Uh, the object looks really good. Still a little bit of artifacts in there, but you know, an ambient occlusion by nature is sort of grainy. So, you know, don't be afraid of the grain. All right, it's almost there. And you can see where by adding production value or quality to this, you know, sort of made it take a lot longer to render. Okay, well, here's what we have now. And where's our lines? Our lines disappeared. <laughs> okay, and I'm just going to save that for posterity. Well, they disappeared because of one thing. And this is what I was telling you about that will trip everyone up. 
is that when you enable this in production quality, if you come back into your feature section, and maybe this is just a bug, maybe it's my computer, I don't know if it works this way with everyone, but mine is deselecting this and my, my uh, around silhouette coverage and my all polyfaces. So in my contour section down here, um, by going to production value or production quality, it sort of unchecked those. So if I recheck these and come back here and do another render, all right, if all goes well, I won't have to do this tutorial again because of a total fail. <laughs> okay. looking pretty good so far but you can see it's taking a lot longer to render and in some cases that might be okay um, if you're doing an animation like a full sequence where you you know need a pretty good wireframe representation you know it could take a while to to render this stuff out um, but if you're just doing you know a, a model and showing off a water a wireframe and all you need is a still image well then this is a perfect method for doing that and like I said, there's about, oh, God, there's a, so many different ways to do a wireframe render. And if you go to um, to the um, uh, Dean Nguyen's uh, arts channel on YouTube, he has another one that he does on um, rendering with like a vector, a vector render. Okay. So anyway, we'll, I'll explore these as time goes on and we'll actually get to the bottom of this. But okay, so that looks great. All right. Um, looks like a sausage or something I would want to throw on the grill <laughs> all right so that's how you do it or at least this method and um, you know just remember go into all your render settings um, and sort of look at where your render settings are go into your your, your um, shading surface your ambient occlusion you know make sure your samples are set pretty high on your ambient occlusion and remember, you can change your spread around of this, this shadow by just tightening it up. If I set this down to like 400, this shadow would get a lot tighter. So let's do that just before I leave here. Let's tighten up the spread to like half of what it is now. And you'll notice a big difference in, in what happens. So let's do a quick render. Oh, the joys of waiting for your renders. Okay, so yeah, this is going to look good. And now you can do it too. All right. So right away, I can actually tell at this point where by, you know, messing with that spread, it sort of added shadow onto the top, which would be kind of normal because that's what, what would be happening if this were blocking the light all the way down. So in a way, that, that's great. And you can see where it tightened up the shadow down here. Uh, a little less spread, you know, and it is exactly what it is. Spread. Yeah. And I could do interactive rendering um, on this, but I really want you to see the process of how long this takes. My Mac has about eight gigs and, um, you know, yeah, punches through them pretty quick. So anyway, let me take a, a snapshot of that. Let me see if we can compare it to our last. Oh, uh, no. Okay. Anyway, you get the idea. Go forth, make yourself some wireframes that look good. My God. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for watching. Read a book. All right? And don't forget to be a good person because good people are, you know, they're good people. So be a good person. All right, thanks for watching.